A exam 2016, looking at the electricity questions. Questions 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. That's it. Let's do them. Okay, question 9. An electrostatic potential V in a region is only a function of X. V of X is shown in the figure below. At which point is the magnitude of the electric field the greatest? This is so easy, so easy. It's simply the steepest point on the graph because the magnitude of the electric field is the gradient of the potential. And looking at these, we can see that D is the steepest point. Okay, it's definitely the point where the gradient is biggest. So therefore, D. Done. Next one, 10. Three point charges of equal mass are fixed in a line as shown below. All three charges are then released at the same time. Which one of the following statements is true immediately after release? Okay, so here they are. So clearly we can see that this charge here will be attracted by that charge and repelled by that charge. This charge here will be attracted by that charge and attracted by that charge equally so it won't move. This charge here is the mirror image of what happened there. It's attracted by that and repelled by that. What's bigger? The for Let's have a look at this charge here and see what's bigger. The force of attraction from there or the force of repulsion from there? Well, the force of attraction is Q. This 2Q times Q and it's 2Q squared divided by D squared times some constant. The force of repulsion from here, so I'm going to draw that arrow in, there it is. The force of repulsion from here is 2Q times 2Q, which is 4Q squared, divided by twice the distance squared. 4Q squared divided by 4D squared, so it's Q squared over D squared. So it's half as big as this force here. So the net force on this is into the middle. The net force on this is zero, and the net force on this, by using the same argument as used over here, is into the middle. Okay, it's all just from the formula F equals K Q1 Q2 over D squared. But remembering that when we have 2D, then you've got to put 2D in it. Okay, so. So the positive charges remain at rest. No, they feel a force to the middle. The positive charge remains at rest. No, they feel a force to the middle. The negative charge remains at rest. Yes, and the positive charges move away. No, they feel a force to the middle. Negative charges remain at rest and the po positive charges move in towards it. Yes. All right. So we have here an uncharged hollow conducting spherical shell has an inner radius A and an outer radius B. A point charge plus Q is placed at the center of the shell. Let's draw the shell. There we are, inner radius A, outer radius B, and a point charge plus Q, plus Q is placed in the middle. And the actual shell contains no, no net charge, it's uncharged. All right. Which one represents the variation of electric potential V as a function of distance R from the point charge? Key thing to remember here is that there will be no field inside the conductor. Hence, the potential must remain constant inside the conductor. It can't change inside the conductor. And the otherwise the field should fall off as 1 over R squared, which means that the potential falls off as 1 over R. So, looking at these, the first two have no field outside, but there is a field outside because if we draw any Gaussian surface around the outside, the total enclosed charge is plus Q, so therefore there are flux lines coming out, so therefore there is an electric field out there, so there must be a potential, there must be a slope in the potential to have an electric field. So that and that are definitely wrong. Now, 
these two are both problematic because they have sharp discontinuities in the potential. That means the gradient of that is the electric field, so we have an infinite electric field here, here, and here. There's no such thing as infinite electric fields. No, no. This one's perfect. There, there, there. So the gradient is falling, getting smaller, and then smaller again, so the electric field is falling off. But it's flat in this region here inside the conductor where we know there is no electric field. So that is perfect, so we go with C. Now, next one, an uncharged hollow conducting shell has a point charge Q placed at its center, plus Q. That's the same as there, isn't it? It's the same. So, which of the following diagrams illustrates the electric field lines? Well, <sighs> it's not this one, because that shows no field lines outside, whereas, as we already discussed for the previous one, there are field lines outside. So it's not that. Um, it's not this one, because this one has no field lines inside, and clearly there's a charge plus Q there, so there must be field lines emanating out from it, right? So it's not that one. Again, this one, no field lines inside. Can't be. Okay, so it's this one or this one. If we have a look at this one, the number of field lines emanating here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But out here it's 16, right? Now, all the charge is there in the middle. There's no extra charge added here. So therefore, how did they extra field lines get there? No. This one, perfect. Every field line inside matches a field line outside. So the total flux going out is just lovely. Let's see it is. Okay. Uh, the good old parallel plate capacitor of some sort. It's connected to a battery, charged, then disconnected. The separation of the plates is reduced to half the initial separation, and the energy stored in the capacitor does what? Okay. Um, look, once you've disconnected it, the two plates are sitting there. charge on them is fixed because these wires are no longer connected to a battery, they're just sitting there, so all the charge sits there being attracted to each other. And we're going to let the plates pull themselves closer together. Okay, So they'll lose energy in doing that. We're not doing work on them. Okay, They're losing energy because we're letting work be done on them. <sighs> Right, so we just got to do the maths, I suppose. The charge is fixed. We have C equals Q over V. We have our capacitance is equal to some constant times the area divided by the distance when we've got plates of a particular area separated by distance d, so that's our distance d between the plates there, d, and that's the area there, area there. So, um, we basically, by move making d half what it was, we're essentially doubling the capacitance, okay? So, after, we have 2C is equal to Q over, and this must become a half V. Because Q stays the same, because the charge has nowhere to go, we've doubled the capacitance by halving the distance between the plates. So therefore, in order for this to remain true, the voltage must become a half what it was before. Now the energy of a capacitor is a half CV squared, and so we have a half times 2C times a half V squared, which when we do everything comes up to a half of of a half C. 
CV squared. So there's its initial energy, half CV squared, and our final energy is a half of that. So there it is, B. Okay. Lastly, uh, don't do that. We have four point charges Q are located at the corners of a square, as so. <coughs> What's the electric flux through a spherical Gaussian surface of radius R centered at the center of this square? There it is. Okay. And this distance from the center of the square to there is A. So if we draw any sphere that is smaller in radius than A, the total enclosed charge will be nothing. Nothing. Okay, but if we draw any sphere that is bigger in radius than A, the total enclosed charge will be 4Q. So therefore, it's 0 for R less than A, and 4Q over epsilon naught for R greater than A. That looks good to me. 0 for R greater than A. No. 0 for R less than A and 4 pi R squared Q over epsilon naught for R greater than A. No. 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 The total amount of flux is given by Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Okay, that's the total amount of flux. By all means, if you want to actually work out the intensity of the flux, you will have to divide by 4 pi r squared, the, or by pi, by something, whatever the area, whatever the area of a surface is. But we're not asked that. We're just asked the total flux, and this one again is wrong. So it's B. Easy done. <coughs>